Hey, it's me. Um, I'm editing the video for my first 100k event and I'm also to try to do a write-up about it um, because it was an interesting experience for me, uh, my very first 100k event. But I'm also, I also wanted to share my raw emotions and what I'm feeling right now before the, those feelings get sorted out and, and all neatly defined and whatnot because it was definitely an interesting experience. Um, so the event happened Saturday, uh, four days ago, and um, the event was called the Tokyo Extreme Walk 100. Um, it, it was a 100 kilometer event where I started in Odawara Castle down south in Kanagawa uh, Prefecture, Odawara City to um, Jingu Gaien, which is closer to Harajuku uh, by the major shrine. It's the outer, it's the, actually the outer part of the shrine. Uh, it's 100 kilometers. The division I, um, um, I participated in was uh, the 26 hour, t uh, t uh, 26 hour time limit uh, division. Uh, they had two 24 or 26 hours. Um, I chose the 26 hours given it's my first event. Um, the at the start it was pouring it was horrible it was just downpour so I was wearing my I was wearing my rain gear and then uh, two three hours later uh, the run uh, the rain cleared up but then a heat wave came in so it ended up being around 34 degrees Celsius um, apparently the hottest day for this year so far with ridiculous humidity because that rained for three days prior um, and we were walking across, uh, along the coastline um, and uh, there was basically no shade um, there was this uh, warm breeze coming in from the ocean uh, filled with humidity from the ocean and, and the rain um, I think I ended up with a little bit of a heat stroke because there are parts of that walk I don't remember. Um, you know, I looked at my cl uh, watch, you know, keeping the distance and I looked at it again and I had walked six kilometers or so and I don't remember any of it. Um, and then my muscles started to cramp up a bit because I was I made sure that I was hydrated enough but um, uh, I, was, I was losing electrolytes and, and other minerals so um, I jumped into uh, a grocery store, grabbed some, you know, stuff with minerals that I knew had minerals in it. I ate that to fuel myself and, and replenish some of my minerals. And that seemed to work a couple um, hours later. Um, they have a couple checkpoints, but up to the 56 kilometer checkpoint, which I think was checkpoint two. Yeah, um, I was okay. I mean, it was expected you know things happen you know my 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 distance demon is always 25 to 35 kilometers that 10k in between is always the roughest for me um and it was fine i knew it was gonna pass so i just kind of let it be there and I, I figured it would pass and it did but that afternoon heat was brutal um i it, i was really close to giving up and when i talked to some other people walking they all felt the same way, you know, they, were, they all felt that afternoon was so brutal that they were going to quit. And then once the sun set, that, uh, the temperature dropped significantly and became a lot easier for us to walk. And uh, so there's about, I think there was about 1300 entries and about a thousand of them finished. So I think the drop, uh, the finish rate is a 76 percentage officially, I think is what they're saying. But I saw a lot of people just kind of passed out on the side of the street as I walked, uh, waiting for for the staff to pick them up or, you know. I also saw some ambulances. I think people suffered from heat stroke or fatigue and, um, but yeah, so up to the 56K, I was doing pretty good. And, but then from the 56K to the next checkpoint at 88 kilometers, that 32 kilometer um, stretch was rough um, it was uh, it was a distance that I'd never gone be before my longest I think is 60k I've ever done so um, 
it was at night um, and um, it, it became a very emotional fighting situation for me not a mental uh, game or a physical game you know my body was hurting but I've come to good at, at ignoring the pain um, or you just kind of like accepting that's going to be you know you, you walk 60k something is going to hurt right and that's just part of it and the mental game is you know you're trying to strategize you're trying to you, you know check with your body you know check the distance check people around you but that wasn't that wasn't the hardest part uh, the, the hardest part for me was the emotional fighting that happened so there's one side of me that is bringing up all these negative feelings about it and the other side trying to, to counter that argument right so one side is going you know is bringing up all these naysayers and people who have been critical about me in my past you know, say you remember that time when he said this this is what he means by that you you you're a quitter you should quit you know you should follow what you are you're a quitter and then <laughs> the other side is saying no that guy's a dick and you know you you have to prove him that he's wrong um you know and uh you have to you have to you have to show him that you have you have changed and and whatever. and you know even before this event you know i talked to a couple of people about it and they're like there's no way you're gonna finish it so my, my, my demons on this side are going, you know, remember that so-and-so that told you that you're not going to be able to do this? They're right. They know more about life than you do. Or, you know, and then these guys, and on the left is like, well, if it was easy, then everybody would do it, you know. And, and there's, so there's basically, there's a, there's, there's a tennis match between two sides of my emotions. And I'm the ball. And I have given up this, at this point. I'm just being bounced from left to right, left to right, as I'm just trying to keep my eye on the road, walking forward. And that continued for about five hours or so, five six hours, uh, until I hit checkpoint uh, for the 88 kilometer checkpoint. It was just me basically trying to find every excuse to give up. And I'm, as I'm walking, I am seeing people giving up. They are just, they have put down their backpacks, they have called in the number, they're waiting for... So they gave us a number to call when we wanted to drop out, right? So that we could make sure that everybody was safe. Um, I see him on the phone calling the number, and I'm sitting there like, look, look, he, she, they are quitting, you know. It's just gonna be another number who quit. No big deal. And then the other side is like, you know, and me is going, well, yeah, but you would know you quit, and are you or like and you know and it was just it was just really weird it, you know it, it was purely it was raw emotions of the good the bad and the ugly inside of me and then once i hit the 88 kilometer checkpoint i had 12 more to go and i had about five hours to go 12 kilometers no four hours so I was like, well, I could crawl and maybe make it. Then I, so I kept walking and walking and walking and then the sun came up and that really helped. So then um, around the seven, like around 93 kilometers, I just picked up my headphones again. I stopped listening to music around the 60 kilometer mark because it was just, I was just tired about any, any, any stimulations. I just wanted to focus. But I knew that if I had seven kilometers left, if I go through my night walking playlist, that is seven kilometers. So it helped me, it helped me manage my expectations because I knew what song was coming up and you know, I knew where in the playlist I was gonna be and how much more I had distance for. And by this time my watch died out of battery. So I had no way of gauging how far I had left. Uh, so I just decided to listen to the music and, and just let it go. And I was just like, I was pumping myself up at every stop sign going, yeah, yeah, I can do this. Fall forward, fall forward, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Samuel Beckett's uh, worst word, ho, you know, what does it mean to fail better? Does that mean to fail less or even fail more? You know, that kind of argument. And, um, and then I crossed the like, goal and I was just, I just stood there for a second. I was like, and I, I was just like, I grabbed the, the tape that they put out in front of me and I'm like, 
damn it, that was far, you know? And then I put it down and then um, I went in to get my uh, finisher certifications. And so I handed in my, uh, my number and the lady looked at it and she goes, this is a beautiful number. And I'm like, well, I don't know what she meant. She's like, this shows you that you struggled through the other game. And uh, it was the kindest words that, that I felt that day, you know, I was just like, damn, that's, that's such a beautiful way to, to congratulate somebody. And then uh, they gave me my certificate and they gave me my t-shirt, you know, the, the finisher t-shirt. And I've gotten shirts before from other events, but when I put this on the first time, I was just like, I was just so weird. I was just kind of like touching myself. I'm like, wow, I've actually finished it, you know. Um, I learned a lot about myself that day. Uh, good, bad, ugly, my shallowness my freakiness my stubbornness all of it i learned a lot about myself uh would i do it again i don't know at this point um i mean knowing me i probably will but um would i recommend it to somebody i Was it worth it? Yes, very much. I, there's a lot, a lot of things I learned. Um, not only from a tactical level, you know, on, on how to manage an event like this, but from an emotional level and a, and a mental level and, and, you know, things I need to improve upon. And, you know, I'm still hurting, you know, my left foot is all messed up, but it's, not, it's nothing permanent, it's just a couple of blisters. It's actually a lot of blisters and a lot, a lot of large ones, but it's fine um, but yeah no I mean it, it's, it's, also, it's also the reason why I decided to record this video first because I don't want I don't want a clean polished so I ran this event and it was awesome kind of kind of video um, you know because it wasn't it was hard and uh, And definitely worth it, worth it, you know. Um, I learned a lot. It also changed me in a way that I didn't expect it would change me. Uh, looking at certain things in my life and you know, whatnot. And there are things now that mean more to me than they did when before I started, so. And the whole point is that, you know, two years ago when I started walking, I was doing two kilometers a night, maybe three times a week, you know, and I, I was calling that, well, it was a good week, you know, and that grew eventually to a 50K and now I'm a 100K finisher. And uh, I know it doesn't mean much, but it's a significant milestone for me. And if, you know, a 50, over 50 year old, <laughs> overweight smoker um, can do it anybody can do it so yeah I mean eventually I'll come up with something more polished I guess but for now this is where I am so anyway stay safe hope you're doing well see you